buddy. Very, very famous place. This was the uh, place that Elijah uh, made famous. And what happened was is that there was an evil king, Ahab, but he had a more evil queen, Jezebel. Many of you have heard of Jezebel and the horrible spirit that she had, and she was driving out the true prophets in the land. And so Elijah came along and <coughs> spoke to him and said, and said, you go tell Ahab that it's not going to rain for three years. Because they've done this and because they've been so evil, it's not going to rain for three years. I mean, no rain, no dew for three years in this land. So you can imagine how dry and parched and people just suffocating. We've been in drought this year. It was very, very, you know, a lot of people were having water restrictions and stuff in Texas where we're from because we went through days and days and days and days on end of 100 degree plus days. But they went three years, no rain, no dew. Well, Elijah went to Ahab and said, this is going to happen. Then he went and hid himself for three years. He just hiding out, hiding out. Ahab couldn't find him. And so the Lord told, uh, when, when it come to the end of the three years, the Lord told Elijah, now it's time for you to go show yourself to Ahab and uh, tell him that we're coming to the end of the three years and I'm going to tell you what to tell him to get the drought to stop. So he goes to Ahab and he said, Ahab, and Ahab immediately says, are you the one that's been causing all this trouble? And Elijah looked right back at him in his eye and said, "Lo." You're the one that's been causing trouble because of all the evil that you've been doing in your, in your wife Jezebel. There's so much evil in the land, God had to judge the land. And he said, if you want to stay, the, if you want to end the drought, here's what we're going to do. Bring the prophets of Baal in. Bring the prophets of the grove. 450 prophets of Baal and the prophets of the grove. Bring them in. And you build an altar. They're going to build an altar. And I'll build an altar. And... Whoever can, whenever, which, who's ever God calls fire down from heaven and consumes their sacrifice, that's the God will serve. I'm happy to serve your God if he does that. But if my God does that, then you're going to serve our God. So they brought everybody in. The people of Israel came in around, and he said, we're all going to meet up on Mount Carmel. That's where we're at right now. And they come up here, and the prophets, the the prophets of the grove, and the prophets of Baal, they all built their ark, built their altar, and Elijah built his altar. He actually rebuilt um, the altar that was already built. Re, re, he reworked the original altar that was there. So the prophets get theirs built, and he said, "Look, you are many. I am one. You guys go first. So they put their sacrifice up on the altar, and they start praying to Baal. And they, well, I mean, they're really getting after it. And it goes from morning till about noon. And Elijah's sitting there like, <laughs> and he starts to make mock them. He said, hey, guys, they're over there. He's, he's standing over here, and he says, hey, guys, maybe your God's on vacation. What's going on? Or, no, this is scripture. Maybe your God's taking a nap. He starts to mock them. Oh, they became vehement, and they got up on the altar, and they started dancing, and they started screaming and yelling and crying out to Baal and cutting themselves. There was blood everywhere. I mean, they were just going crazy. And oh, here's old Elisha. Of course, they never received any fire from heaven because there's no God of Baal. And they were serving false gods. They, there was nothing. They were not, they were not real at all. And so all the people, the people of Israel are watching. watching, And they've been dismayed because they had King Ahab and Jezebel. But one man of God stood up against all of them and he said, okay. He said, boys, just afternoon and in the end of the evening, now it's my turn. We're going to see what the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will do. He said, so Guys, here's what I want you to do. I want you to put the sacrifice up on the altar that I built. and But that's just not it. They got it up there, and okay, the people of Baal, they're over there laying over there bleeding, and they're like, what in the world's going to happen? And he said, okay, now, you guys go get four barrels of water. Now, remember, it hadn't rained in three years. No rain, no dew. But he said, you guys go get four barrels of water. So they went and got four barrels of water, and he said, dump it on the sacrifice. And they were like, okay. So they went and got the water and dumped it all around. They, it actually had a trench around it, and it filled up some of the trench. He said, no, that's not enough. Go get four more barrels. 
And they were like, oh, okay, this guy's kind of losing it, but let's go. So they went and got four more barrels, and they dumped that on there. And he said, no, that's not enough. You guys go get four more barrels. So they got 12 barrels of water dumped. I mean, this sacrifice is just looked like a sloppy, wet, nasty mess. And this is where I'll pick it up. I'm, I'm going to be in 1 Kings 18. Because now it's time for his sacrifice, and I'm, I'm going to start at 36. 1 Kings 18, 36. And this is where he begins to pray. The Bible says, And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now remember, the people of Israel have been under King Ahab and Jezebel all these years. They become totally dismayed in everything, but he prays. The Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let it be known that this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell, consumed the burnt sacrifice, consumed the wood and the stones and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench around the outside. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is the Lord God. He is God. He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. And Elijah said unto them, Now take the prophets of Baal. Let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down, which is just over here, down to the brook, brook Kishon. We can show you when we get up there. There's a little brook down there. That's the brook Kishon. And, sl and he slew all of them. And you can see a statue to him. He's getting ready to, sl to slay one of the prophets there. And so that's what happened here. Now, I'm, you know, Elijah was a pretty rough prophet. He killed 450 prophets of Baal in one day. So I'm not 100% sure you'd want him being your pastor, would you? <laughs> I mean, you'd have to really straighten up. I mean, come on. And I don't think he walked on eggshells around people when he preached do you and so it's very important one of the other that's what happened here that's why this place is famous because it happened up here those sacrifices or i should say the sacrifice happened up here on mount carmel and then the Kishon uh is right down there you'll see it when you go up on top here one of the other things i wanted to say is that god would not tolerate somebody worshiping other than him throughout the bible not just the Old Testament, the Bible. The Bible says there's none formed before him, none after him, none beside him. God is a jealous God. I am. The Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The Jews, uh, the, uh, Abraham, uh, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all know that. The mezuzahs, that when you go in your hotel room, you see the little mezuzah, Deuteronomy 6, 4. Many of them will touch it as they go in. They're always reminding themselves. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The... Um, I saw one of the guys on the plane on the way over here. He got up and wrote, pushed his sleeve up and wrapped that deal around his arm and then put that deal over his little box. And that's saying, Hero is with the Lord our God is one Lord. They're keeping at the forefront of their mind. When they pray, they do it. They got that thing rattling around in their forehead. Hero is with the Lord our God is one Lord. Because God will not tolerate anything. Any, any, there we go. I'm so sorry. I, that, that, <laughs> they, um, yeah, God will not tolerate worship of anybody but him the bible says when israel started to worship of, that actually sounds pretty cool like background music to me. <laughs> the, the bible says that when israel would start worshiping any other sometimes they would backslide it's not working it's not working <laughs> throw it over the cliff throw it down to the Kishon. Yeah, no the, the, the bible yeah there we go the, uh yeah. The Bible says that when Israel would start, they, sometimes they would backslide away from worshiping God and they would worship other idols. And God would have to exile them out of his presence. And the Bible says at that point that Israel went a whoring after other gods. She was a, um, it was a compromised individual. And that they went a whoring after other gods. They went away from their true master and they would walk away and start worshiping other gods. God does not like that. Now, he didn't like it 4,000 years ago. 
because God commissioned him to do what he did. And then he doesn't like it in 2022, though. And there are huge efforts. The Bible prophesies of a world religion that will be established at the time, just prior to the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's Revelation 13, 11 through 15. And it is Revelation chapter 17 and 18. God reveals unto John the judgment of the great whore or the great harlot. And it's the false religious church in the end time. There's going to be a world religious system. And they are going to tolerate. The, like the parliament, it's happening right now. It, it just the, um, Many churches and different uh, organizations are signed up into this. Uh, religions around the world, the parliament of world's religions, this big thing that just happened in Kazakhstan, all the different churches that are trying to mold back together under the interfaith movements and things like that. God is not pleased with that. Under the interfaith movement, think about this. Elijah would have have to have accepted and tolerated the prophets of Baal and the prophets of the grove. God did not sanction that. God said, you want to get rid of this drought, you're going to have these sacrifices and we're going to take care of business here and we're going to drive all that false religion out of Israel and you're going to know that I'm the Lord God of Israel. So God did not tolerate false religion 4,000 years ago and God's not going to tolerate false religion today. I know that it is easy, it's the easiest thing to do, it's just to say, well, let's just say everybody's okay and everybody's going to make it to heaven and there are a thousand different ways to go to heaven and let's just all tolerate everybody and love everybody because God's all about love, not about doctrines separating each other. And however, I have seen people stand in pulpits. I've, had, I've studied this stuff for years. I've seen people stand in pulpits and say, well... Let's not, let not, let's not let our doctrines divide us. Let's all sweep the doctrines under the rug and let's let God sort all that out when we get up there and let's just all love each other and get along and regardless of what you believe. If you want to believe in a thousand gods, then that's fine because God's all about love. Well, God is about love, but God's also about standing by his word as well. And so God is a God of love, but just as much as he's a God of love, he's a God of judgment. Everybody always wants to talk about the love, and I do too. Because yeah. if it wasn't for his love, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? Yeah. He's all about love. He came here and died for us because he loved us. But just as much as he's a God of love, he's a God of judgment. God sanctioned this action that happened up here. And God knew that Elijah was going to slay all these prophets before he ever said, now it's time for you to go see Ahab. And so it's very important that we understand in the end times, we don't want to be part of a world religious system. God's going to judge that. And it's very important to God. Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. I just wrote an article. I stayed back yesterday from Masada to write an article on Mikhail Gorbachev. He just passed away. A lot of people thought Mikhail Gorbachev was a potential candidate for the Antichrist when early on when he was tearing down the Berlin Wall and he was talking about the New World Order and all these different things he wrote a book called Perestroika and in the book Perestroika Revelation chapter 13 exposes Satan's effort to establish his physical kingdom here on the earth in the end time uh, world government Revelation 13 1 through 8 it talks about the world government and the Antichrist the leader of that Revelation 13, 11 through 15 talks about the world religion and the leader of that, the false prophet. And then it goes into Revelation 13, 16 through 18 where it talks about the mark of the beast. And it's talking about, um, it's exposing Satan's effort to establish his kingdom here on the earth. Well, Gorbachev, a lot of people thought communism died when Gorbachev tore the Berlin Wall down and the Cold War died and the Cold War ended. No, no. They started, most of the Eastern, uh, the European nations after that, I think 15 of the 18, voted in socialistic governments. And so they started implementing socialism, but there's a Communist Party USA. Did you know that? It's been here for decades. And in their 2005 Communist Party platform, they actually said what we're really trying to do in the United States is to first implement the soft cell socialism, leading to the higher phase communism. Well, now when you see all these socialists, you understand, you've heard of people say, well, we're democratic socialists. It's not, we're not near as bad as a communist. We're just democratic socialists. Stalin, Lenin, all of those guys started as democratic socialists. 
The USSR started as a democratic socialist experiment. Look where it ended up. Stalin killed 20 million of his own people. So they're trying to do that. So Gorbachev was a dyed-in-the-wool communist, but he realized, I can't go in and do a Bolshevik revolution in the United States because they'll defeat me mil militarily. So what I really need to do is get a couple few key people on board with the world government and implement socialism. And then once you get a, a hold of somebody's economy, then we can go to the higher phase communism. That's what perestroika was all about. I told you about the world government, world religion, mark of the beast in uh, Revelation 13. In Gorbachev's book, Perestroika, he actually advocates for a world government, a world religious system. He actually said we need to extirpate all religious exclusive individuals. Anybody who wasn't, doesn't want to get on board with this world religious system where everybody's okay and let's just all get along, we're not going to have parallel religions. We're not going to have somebody running alongside that's doing their own thing. He said we need to extirpate all religious exclusive individuals. Everybody who says that your religion is the only way to make it. We need to extirpate means to kill, kill off. Yes. Gorbachev, I've got the book. That we need to kill off all religious exclusiveness. Well, do you think Jesus Christ would have been considered a religiously exclusive individual? Mm -hmm. yes. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Right. Gorbachev advocated for killing off somebody like Jesus Christ or a Christian that says, well, no, Jesus Christ is the only way. Yes. So now you've got people that call themselves Christians, but that are saying, well, there's really more than one way to God. And so I wanted to bring that up here because you see how God dealt with false religion. Now, I'm not saying let's have a sacrifice on the courthouse lawn tomorrow. But what I'm saying is, is that in the end time, a true Christian individual, can you can't be a part of an interfaith movement. It doesn't work like that. There's not... Hear me clearly. There's not two ways to be saved. There's not even two. One. What did Jesus tell Nicodemus in John 3? Except a man's born again, you cannot enter or see the kingdom of God. He didn't say, oh, oh, oops, hold on a uh, second, Nicodemus. I accidentally misspoke. Uh, except a man's born again and do this. He said, except a man's born again. Now, do I believe the words, words of Jesus or do I not? Yes. Right. And so, very, very important. And um, I wanted to bring some of that up when we talk about this is false religion, and God was driving it out of Israel. And he brought on, it was so important to him that he made a plan, and it's not going to rain in Israel for three years. I want these people to know that when it's, because he told Ahab, uh, Elijah, he, God told him, go tell him, it's fixing to rain. But you're going to do this sacrifice deal first, and you're going to drive out the false religions because I'm not going to bless that. And once he drove them out and he took them down here in Kishon, when you get, we're going to go up on top of this building right here. There's some really cool stuff up there. You're going to see where Egypt is, and it's got some big arrows pointing and stuff. You can look over, over this whole big valley here. And, but you can look down there and see the Kishon. When you look down and see the Kishon, that's where Elijah did the deed. And they took care of false religion in Israel at that point. So very important because I know of churches. I'm not going to name them, but I know of major church organizations that have already signed on to documents yeah. of justification with the world religious system. I've got documentation for all that. Mm -hmm. And so that's something you'll not want to be a part of in the end time. And I thought I would bring that up here because God doesn't tolerate false religion. And if I want to spend eternity with him, I can't be a part of a false religious system. So anyway, uh, they're saved by the bell. <laughs> so I'm going to give it back to Ron. And uh, thank you very much. I, you know, some of the things we talk about, you may not even, it may not have ever been on your radar. However, I'm so sorry. I'm it, it, it's okay. It's, uh, it's just important that you understand that God is love and he's all about love and he gave himself for us because he's love, but he also wants us to line up to a certain belief system. And if you've never been taught that, then uh, you need to be because it's very, very important in the end time.